We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, everyone. The warm greetings from Katowice to all our online participants and speakers. I'm having a strong panel of speakers here in the room. And uh, you can also see Henriette. She has warned me not uh, repeating inviting 500 speakers to IGF because we had done a three hour no break session on day zero to promote the wrong principles and indicators. Today is a follow up. I do refrain from inviting another 500, but we have 15 speakers. Very good because you are you so really strong supporter we cannot really miss the end of you so first of all i like to i have the honor to invite the unesco assistant director general mr uh, tofik jelassi to join us from online he, he was actually with us yesterday on katowice but now he's in paris uh, he still uh, joined us from the screen hi uh, mr adg are you all are you all well on your trip welcome yeah arrived uh, very late uh, after midnight last night, but I'm okay. Oh, thank you for, for making time. I know you arrived in um, Paris very late and now join us so early. So could you please address some welcome remarks to all our partners, friends here of Dynamic Coalition of Rome? With great pleasure. Thank you, Shahang. Good morning, everybody, uh, colleagues, ladies, gentlemen, uh, whether you are physically in Katowice or connected online, I'm very pleased to welcome you this morning to this uh, session, which, which will cover a very important uh, topic. Uh, obviously, the dynamic coalition on the internet universality. At Kotovice, we, uh, the team of UNESCO has already had extensive sessions, including a three hour session on Monday, in which I participated, which focused also on the internet universality indicators and the work of UNESCO in particular around the Rome framework. Uh, this Rome framework, uh, R-O-A-M, which as you may know, means a human rights, open, accessible, and multi-stakeholder multi approach to the internet and to digital technologies. It was adopted uh, in, uh, it was first launched by UNESCO in October 2020, a bit over a year ago, at, at the 15th edition of the Internet Governance Forum. This work of UNESCO is a contribution uh, because we believe that it's very important to have a common objective by placing the Internet governance at the center of the international agenda. And we are very glad that uh, we, UNESCO, uh, over the last 15 years, have be, uh, we have been uh, very much involved and strong supporter of IGF and contributing with some content, like the topic of this morning. So uh, uh, the, the Rome principles were actually adopted by the UNESCO General Conference back in 2015, so six years ago to the day almost, and this echo the relevance on a global stage of such an approach in order to inform policy makers and decision makers about the importance of a human rights based governance model for the internet but also beyond for other digital technologies so the concept here of internet universality and the rome framework are tangible outputs of the work that we have been carrying out with the IGF community. And here I would like to take this opportunity to thank all stakeholders and members of the Internet Governance Forum community for their contributions, for their inputs, and also the National Commissions uh, for UNESCO and beyond for having adopted our Internet Universality Indicators and Rome Framework to conduct national assessment of their digital strategy and their digital readiness. This is obviously a major goal 
of putting together this, uh, this type of uh, fr framework. Uh, the dynamic coalition on the internet universality is a result of our joint work. It is an excellent forum to share experiences, to bring to the fore best practices, and obviously to stimulate and inspire each other about how we can go forward in terms of adoption, use of these indicators and their own principles. So the co coalition clearly aims to promote this such a free open exchange among ourselves, and it does provide a multi-stakeholder space for dialogue and also for cooperation. So let me here say that uh, to date we have about 34 countries from all over the world that, that have adopted and used uh, the internet universality indicators and our Rome framework to conduct national assessment. Uh, the very first country having done that is Brazil. The very latest country having completed that is Germany uh, from a couple of months ago with a publication about the way they want about using these indicators to conduct a national assessment. Other countries are between start and finish in, their, in using these indicators for their own national assessment. And clearly, we believe that this approach helps countries to achieve the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. There are many parties that have been contributed and I want to explicitly this morning acknowledge them, uh, in particular, the German and the Polish National Commissions for UNESCO, the Internet Society, the Council of Europe, ICANN, the Regional Center of Studies for the Development of the Information Society, CETIC, the Association for Progressive Communication, and the African ICT Commission. Going forward, we believe that the, the, this dynamic coalition will continue to strengthen the synergies and partnerships among IGF stakeholders, because we do share the same goal, we do share the same purpose, how to create a, a humanistic and inclusive digital space that can benefit all. And we would like to push for this both at the local, regional, national levels, but also internationally. So we are here this morning to hear from our partners and our coalition members uh, to hear uh, from them, to, 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 to seek their inputs and recommendations going forward as far as the internet universality indicators are concerned and the, frame for, for the, the Rome framework is concerned. Again, let's keep in mind, these are important, I would say more than tools, these are important levers uh, that frame discussions that uh, maybe guide national assessments and ultimately ca ca could shape uh, the forming an inclusive human, humanistic digital environment. So in closing, I would like to invite all participants present this year at the IGF in Katowice to join our dynamic coalition, not only to contribute to its development, but also to benefit from uh, what it offers in terms of knowledge, experience, and expertise. So let's join forces. It's only together that we can make it happen. We must work together in order to make our voice heard and in order to bring about impact on the ground. Uh, so I am confident that the discussions that you are about to start this morning will inform uh, the way forward and will provide us not only the, the continuous encouragement, but also the inspiration uh, to make the work of our dynamic coalition more meaningful and more impactful. Thank you for your kind attention, and I wish you a fruitful session. Thank you so much, Mr. ADG, for all your passionate message and your highest support. This year, with your presence, we do witness that our UNESCO Internet Universality principles and Rome indicator are really roaming to Katowice and also actually rocking at the entire IGF. And now I wonder that if, are you going with us for some time or you are leaving soon?
I have to go to open oh. another event. So I'm sorry. I would have liked to, to listen to all the speakers and benefit from that. But unfortunately, I have to go to another event. Yeah, perhaps we can take a group picture before ADG leave uh, in the room and then take a hybrid picture with you. Uh, so uh, may, may, may you, uh, all our participants in the room, come to the front and uh, all the speakers on the Zoom to uh, turn your cam camera. We did a very innovative photo on the first day. It's, it's uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Tai, please. Everybody in the room. <laughs> I'll get my, uh, where's, uh, uh, Guillaume, you should be part of us. We can ask them, uh, we have a photographer here. <laughs> Anybody can take a picture, a picture of us. Thank you. And uh, Guillaume, please, you are a part of us. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I will. I'm not going to be married. Is it possible to have all the speakers on the post screen? It's similar in the smiling. But what about the most? No mask. Okay, thank you. 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 <laughs> so thank you everybody uh, for uh, for dancing a little bit at the very beginning. Now I'm very honored to uh, introduce the first speaker representing German Commission for UNESCO, Dr. Luz Moller, the Deputy Secretary General. Thank you Dr. very much. Yeah, 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 we see you clearly. We, we hear you clearly. Please, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, dear ADG Dr. Chelassi, dear colleagues, dear Mrs. Esterhosen, as chair of the IGF multi-stakeholder advisory group, friends, in particular friends in Poland, um, since the IGF is in Katowice, uh, I don't have to tell you how important it is that we speak about um, a human rights-based evolution of the internet ecosystems, because these, uh, the rapid development of these ecosystems and the sometimes uncontrolled development of these ecosystems is one of the key challenges that our societies globally face today. Um, we have to ensure in these ecosystems that their development is human rights based, open, just, diverse, inclusive, participatory, empowering, and promoting human well being. This is one of the key insights of the new German government as well, which has come into power yesterday. The new German Chancellor has been elected on the, on the day of yesterday and the new German coalition agreement really is focusing to a very great extent on a new modern um, um, development of um, internet digital ecosystems for the, uh, for the just and the well-being of our societies. And in this context, it's really really, really important to have the UNESCO Rome X principles at hand. Actually, Germany has been the fifth UNESCO member state and the first from the global north that has completely utilized this instrument, which is the only instrument available globally to appropriately measure whether national internet policy making and the implementation of such policies into practice live up to the ambition of openness of human rights, of accessibility, and multi-stakeholder approach. We have these uh, UNESCO um, Internet Universality Indicators since a couple of years, and wherever they have been applied, they deliver 
brutally honest evidence whether a particular UNESCO member state's policy and the practice, whether they are really human rights based, whether they are really open, whether they really allow access to all and governed by a multi-stakeholder participation approach. Therefore, in Germany, the German Federal Foreign Office supported the idea from upfront that the German Commission for UNESCO has applied these indicators to German, to German internet policy making politically and financially. We have worked together over the last one and a half years with one of the leading research institutes in Germany on this issue, the Leibniz Institute for Media Research or Hans Predo Institute, and to conduct a study. And indeed, what we have found out is that in Germany, despite having a very high level of development in terms of freedom of the press, freedom of expression in our country, as well as, as to access to information, there is still a lot of need for action. And we have found out that the urgent call of the Rome X the principles that wherever action is taken, that this is based on human rights, that also there is still leeway to improve our action here in Germany. For example, there is still insufficient legal regulation in Germany on how personal rights, that is the right to privacy on online platforms can be protected without restricting freedom of ex expression. Another example, there is still insufficient internet access to jobless persons or the elderly here in Germany. Now, none of these insights from applying the internet universality in indicators to Germany by itself is entirely surprising. However, the joint application of these um, more than 100 indicators at the same time, applying them to a country and in all its policy making in all of in all fields of policy uh, of internet policy, really provides for the first time a very holistic and integral uh, view, and therefore, of course, allows for much more decisive actions afterwards. Therefore, we have seen huge interest in, um, the, in the results of our study. We have presented them in parliament. We have presented them in many different fora for political, administrative, and scientific stakeholders at all levels. And we have met huge interest because um, in such an important field as internet, internet policy making, it is not sufficient to focus on one um, area alone, just focusing, for example, only on the access of people with um, migration background, but we need an integral approach in order to have really um, sincere action and to really improve um, internet policy making for the benefit of our societies. Therefore, uh, the German Commission for UNESCO, as well as that our partner, the Leibniz Institute for Media Research, both of us, we joined the dynamic coalition on the internet universality indicators from the start to share our experience and to share good practice. We also offer our support to other parties and member states to enable them to apply the internet universality indicators in their countries in the future. And we look forward to working together with you on the evaluation of the IOI in the upcoming years and really keep them up to date with the ongoing developments. We are looking forward to working with you and sharing our experience. In summary, our experience have been fantastic. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Moller. I also like to congratulate you and the German for having conducted such an excellent uh, report. I actually carry the German report with me throughout the IGF in Katowice. And uh, many, many stakeholders, countries are asking for a copy of your uh, reports. And also many countries also expressing their interest uh, by inspire, inspired by, by German's uh, assessment also to, uh, to be convinced by impact you are having uh, through this assessment. Thank you so much. Uh, the next speaker I'm going to introduce is uh, Henriette Aysa Hussain. Uh, Madame IDF, the, she's re representing IDF MAG and also she's literally the chair and the former executive director of Association for the Progressive Communication. Why I mention this is because APC was the implementing partner for UNESCO to have developed this 303 universe 
Universal Genomics Indicators. So, Henriette, uh, please take the floor. And uh, uh, yeah, I have a microphone here. Um, thank you very much, um, <coughs> Zhang Hong. And um, Lutz, it's really also such a pleasure to speak after you because I want to refer to what you've been saying. Um, firstly, my role was really just to be the project manager for the development of the indicators. And I want to just say two things about the indicator development process. It was really intensive. UNESCO committed to developing these indicators in a very bottom-up consultative way. And I think that's actually one of the reasons why, 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 why it's so successful. The development started with the, the principles. So even when it came to identifying the Rome principles. Um, that was done in a consultative way. And I think they are human rights based. And I think as, as, as Dr. Mulder said, they are the only interest instrument we really have that is human rights based. But it's not just human rights based in, and it wasn't just developed in a mechanical sense with somebody looking at material around the human rights-based approach. It was really developed with consultation from the stakeholders. So it, 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 it's fit to purpose. I think why I am personally so, so proud to have been part of this and to see you use the IGF as a platform is that I think in, in the whole multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance, we have this very powerful tool that can help us do internet governance better, that can increase accountability of states and of corporations, that create more opportunities for the voices of excluded people and groups to influence policy and practice. But we also have this, this rhetoric, the multi-stakeholder rhetoric, which often becomes so powerless in a way, it becomes so polite um, that I think we, we often stop using the, the potential of the multi-stakeholder approach to create better governance because we're not applying it. And I'm going to quote Dr. Muller here, we're not applying it in a way that gives us that brutally honest evidence that we need to, to be able to confront what's not working well and then make changes to address uh, those problems. I think the indicators do that. I think they, they, they move beyond rhetoric. They provide uh, learning, evidence, and action. I think that you use the IGF as a platform for, for, for sharing that learning and finding new partners that want to participate in applying the indicators um, is not only really using the IJ for what it was intended for, I think you could also be setting a, pre a precedent. I'd like, for example, to see um, groups that are monitoring the application of voluntary norms um, or the norms of the group of governmental experts on responsible behavior uh, of states in cyberspace to, to do their monitoring and learning collaboratively and bring it back to the IGF. So I really uh, want to thank you for, for doing this because I think you've given us an example of how this multi-stakeholder approach can have teeth and can generate positive action going forward. Thank you, Henriette. May I follow up with you for another question? You know, at IDF, the theme is Internet United. For UNESCO, Rome principle is really a basis that the Internet can be united. And now looking into the future, we are uh, looking forward to implementing the UNSG's uh, digital collaboration roadmap and also creating a new global digital compact. How do you think the Romex principles indicate the entire implementation can be instrumental to this uh, uh, future initiative. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Zhang Hong. I think, firstly, when we say Internet United, I think it actually means that we know the internet is not united and we would like it to be. I think, I think it's an inspirational phrase, but I think we also need to look at what is beyond and behind, behind it. I think the, the Rome X principles, because they are human rights based, they, they link to established international human rights standards. They translate those into the internet. They translate the practice of multi-stakeholder governance into the internet context. So therefore I think they provide the material that we need for the global digital compact. And I think your work with member states um, 
uh, develops the kind of bottom up, uh, or let me say with member states, but at a multi-stakeholder level, support that we need for a global digital compact, which is supported and which, which has a smooth path that actually reflects these fundamental principles. Because in fact, what do we want to see in the global digital compact? We want to see a reflection of the Rome X principles, uh, or the Rome, the Rome principles. And I think we want to see a recognition that the internet is a common good and that it should be governed as that. So I think you've done the groundwork that can really inform and, and build uh, into the, the consultative process that I hope will lead into a compact that reflects these principles um, and that uses the IGF community, including the national and regional IGFs, um, and that can actually, I hope, become a very significant milestone in shifting how we look at internet governance um, globally. Thank you so much for so a strategic high guidance. We definitely move in that direction. The next speaker, I'm, I really super, super pleased to introduce is Constance Momler, the Area Vice President, Institutional Relations and Empowerment from Internet Society. Um, Constance, you are with us? Yes, thank uh, you very much, Zhang Hong, and uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, important discussion at the IGF, and uh, I regret to not be able to be there with you um, in person, but this is uh, certainly work that at the United Society we have been uh, supporting since its inception. Um, and uh, I'd like to bounce perhaps a little bit on what Henriette was saying. It's very important, this initiative, because it provides uh, the digital community, the internet community, uh, policymakers, leaders, with tools. It's not just uh, a list of principles, uh, beautiful statements. It gives us an opportunity at the local regional level uh, to be able to assess progress, to monitor um, where things uh, are in terms of the openness of the internet, uh, the respect of multi-stakeholder principle, uh, the importance of um, having rights-based approaches. And uh, I can say that at the United Society, uh, the reason why we uh, felt that this initiative was so close to our heart is that the principles, Rome, uh, are uh, very close to uh, the principles that we support. Uh, for instance, uh, thinking about access, um, we have been investing in developing community networks, IXPs, um, all sorts of initiatives to uh, provide access to people. Uh, the multi-stakeholder principle is, again, something that we have been promoting uh, throughout external engagement, uh, throughout uh, conversations with governments, but also supporting participation of other stakeholders, civil society, technical community, and others, as we believe that um, unless there's meaningful participation, this whole concept of, of multi-stakeholder governance is going to be an empty shell. That's also why we, we uh, support uh, capacity building and we're sending people to the IGF. Uh, we support uh, e-learning activities. Um, again, unless there are these concrete steps, um, participation will not be meaningful and multi-stakeholder will be an, an empty concept. So we're very pleased to see that this initiative is now um, present, active, uh, alive in different countries. Uh, we're very happy uh, this year to be supporting some of these local assessments. I think my colleague Dawit Bekele will, will say a few words about that, uh, including in, in Africa, but also in, in other regions. Um, and it's, it's very encouraging to see that there's now a, a bit of a movement around the principles promoted by internet universality. Uh, and, and we feel that the team at UNESCO has been doing a, a wonderful job, uh, really uh, leading on this activity and uh, really making a, a, a real uh, value proposition to the internet community with a concept, but also tools um, where very strong principles are, are embedded, uh, something that people uh, can really uh, um, support and, uh, and, and unite uh, uh, around. So thank you very much, Xiang Hong, and the, the entire UNESCO team, and the United Society is uh, thrilled to be part of this initiative. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Constance, for Internet Society and also for your personal support. Without the Internet Society in the Rome, we developed the principle, we wouldn't have the all, I mean, openness aspect is so strongly embedded in it. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker I'm going to introduce is uh, Suada Hasovic, representing the ICANN GAC Human Rights Working Group Chair. So, Suada, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see you, hear you perfectly. Floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for giving me here the opportunity to present the work of GAC Human Rights International Law Working Group and our cooperation with UNESCO. Firstly, I would like to give a brief description of the working group for which I am the co-chair. Well, ICANN Governmental Advisory Committee, GAC, represents the voice of governments and intergovernmental organizations in ICANN's multi-stakeholder structure. So the GAC has 179 governments as members and 38 intergovernmental organizations as observers. And there are seven working groups in GAC. One of these working groups is uh, the GAC Working Group on Human Rights and International Law. And our focus is, as, as the name is, um, uh, aspects of ICANN's policies and procedures which relate to human rights and relevant international law. So uh, what is our current uh, focus of our work? On the November 2019, the ICANN board approved the recommendations outlined in the final report on the cross-community working group of enhancing ICANN accountability work stream two. So this uh, work stream two uh, final report is seen as a big step ahead in the incorporation of human rights in ICANN's various processes and with 116 recommendations on various aspects ranging from diversity to transparency. This work stream two report is divided into the eight issues. So um, at ICANN 69 meeting held in October 2020, uh, our working group on human rights and international law uh, agreed upon the leading the implementation of uh, recommendation one, diversity, and three, human rights core value. So, um, as we know, UNESCO and ICANN have a long standing cooperation. Um, if we talk about the GAC specifically, uh, uh, I, UNESCO is a GAC of observers, uh, observer and also a um, GAC Human Rights International Law Working Group member. And finally, uh, ICANN is a member of Dynamic Coalition on Internet Universality Indicators. So uh, logically, recently our working group together with GAC working group on underserved regions, start cooperation with UNESCO in work on the implementation of work team two, recommendations particularly on um, providing a draft definition of diversity from GAC perspective. Um, in, on September, UNESCO presented uh, its report on the Internet Universality Indicators to uh, our working group and understood working group in order to uh, exchange views and discuss whether the Internet Universality Indicators should be considered within the GAC works team to implementation process. And answer is yes, of course. We need um, because uh, we need UNESCO because um, in the context of the works team two recommendations on diversity, the Rome X indicators may contribute to ICANN's work on the matter to the extent that the unique package of 21 Rome X indicators in multi-stakeholder participation on one hand broadly measures the inclusiveness of the national internet governance in terms of involving diverse sectors, marginalized groups like women, youth, people with disability and so on. On the, other, on the other hand, it contains several ICANN's dedicated indicators to measure to what extent ICANN processes and meetings are participated by diverse countries and stakeholders. Of course, very important, we have the accessibility category in the report. The Romex framework has a number of indicators to assess uh, the diversity of the main name registration and diversity of access and multilingualism in terms of both the main names and local content in the certain countries. And so on, and so on, and so on, because we have a Romex framework with 79 cross-cutting uh, indicators uh, um, concerning gender, trust, security, legal, and ethical aspects of the internet. So in this regard, uh, in the last uh, ICANN 72 meeting in October 2021, 
uh, together our working group on human rights, international law, and under the third region, together with UNESCO, we provide a draft definition on the diversity from a gap perspective. And uh, once the uniform definition for the diversity elements have been finalized, we need uh, six months uh, and eight, uh, six between six and eighteen months to implement these recommendations. And uh, a lot of work awaits for us, but we are convinced that we will do it successfully because we have a great team and UNESCO is a great member of this team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Swaga, for pointing out so many relevant indicators. We are so happy Romex can help with the ICANN's work. The next speaker is Alexandra Barbosa, the head of CIDIC, the UNESCO Institute. Hi, Alexandra. I saw your email from a thousand miles away. Could you please take the floor? I couldn't hear you. Could yeah, you unmute? Yeah. I, now good. I can hear you per, and I uh, see you perfectly. Thank, thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, dear colleagues. Um, it's a great pleasure to join you in this uh, dynamic coalition session. Well, uh, this uh, discussion is very dear to my heart because we have been um, in the very beginning of this process. And I would like to start by acknowledging, Shan Hong, the fact the, uh, that the Internet Universality Romex indicators became uh, a reference for member states willing to assess the level of internet development in their countries. And this means that the Romex uh, framework has achieved in a very short period of time, I would say, um, a really wide recognition from a broad range of stakeholders. And part of this uh, recognition comes from the fact that it is based on human rights principles as it was already highlighted by my previous colleagues. And the IUI has already proven to be an important tool for improving policy implementation by several member states. And having said that, I would like to add my voice to this dynamic coalition of Romex to support the Internet Universality Project uh, and reaffirm our willingness to enhance collaborations of national multi-stakeholder for advancing human rights online and digital cooperation at the national and regional levels. The IUI indicators are broad in scope, as all of us know, and it is also robust and relevant to measure not only the internet development itself, but it is a fundamental framework to understand how countries are dealing with the digital transformation. In this regard, uh, I, I would like to say that the framework is of high policy relevance since it constitutes an excellent tool for measuring existing gaps and ensuring uh, human rights and ethics on the digital environment. <clears throat> uh, it is important to highlight the multi-sectoral nature of the Romax framework. Uh, and the outcomes from the implementation of this framework uh, may guide governments, uh, private sector, technical community and civil society to take really bold actions to foster future um, initiatives capable of harnessing the internet development. Uh, besides this uh, framework, uh, it, it, is that it does provide an inspiring interdisciplinary reflection on how to build an inclusive internet ecosystems and on how to identify potential gaps uh, of internet development policies. Uh, the organization that I work for, the Regional Center for Studies on the Development of the Information Society, CETIC.br, at the Brazilian Network Information Center, has been an active player in all phases um, of UNESCO's technical meetings and public consultation uh, that discussed the internet universality concept and indicators uh, in the Romax framework. Um, and being one of the first countries to pilot and implement the framework. So for us, um, it is with great satisfaction that we see an increasing number of countries implementing national assessments based on the ROM principles. And uh, for us in Latin America, it is real uh, a privilege to be part of this and to see that Latin America played an important role in this development. Uh, 
And the dynamic coalition of internet universality indicators should be a platform to allow UNESCO and its partners to create a global support community to tackle challenges posed by the digital transformation and the challenge in making the digital technologies a real driver to accelerate the attainment of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The coalition as a platform should be um, able to promote capacity building to member states in their data collection and methodological efforts um, necessary to lead to a successful assessment and the formulation of a strong and powerful recommendations to policymakers. Um, I have to say that I agree with Anhiet that the IGF is fundamental to engage um, stakeholders to advance internet universality and to promote national assessments of internet universality indicators to an even great number of countries. In summary, I would say that uh, the stakeholders integrating this coalition are in face uh, of four great opportunities. That's my, my opinion, Shen Hong. First, uh, to exchange good practices and lessons learned in the implementation process of national assessment. And here I have to, uh, to say that CETIC is already being an, an active um, actor in sharing experience with other national teams, mainly in Latin American countries. Second, uh, to provide technical support to countries willing to implement national assessment. Third, to raise uh, interest from more, more countries and stakeholders to conduct voluntary assessment of internet universality indicators. And last but not least, uh, to promote capacity building initiatives uh, to support countries to implement recommendations generated by the national assessments. So Shen Hong, with that, uh, this is my main views on the great opportunities that we have um, having this coalition as a platform to promote this uh, frame, framework. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. We do miss you here in Katowice. And, and thank you for all your valuable suggestions. It was really well taken. The last speaker from the first segment would be from uh, Madame Doris Gordon, UNESCO FF Chair. Hi, Doris. You are with us from Ghana. Good to see you, Xiang Hong, and good to see all my friends, uh, both online and in the room. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, IFAP, as most of you know, is the Information for All program, and it's dedicated to an inclusive and equitable information society and to supporting member states to get their policies right in that direction. And so for us, it was a no brainer, as they say in the US, that member states of IFAP through the IFAP Council and Bureau supported the implementation of the IUIs and the ROMEX indicators. And why is that? Yes, we want to build an inclusive and equitable knowledge society. But to be frank, how to do that is a mystery for most. Every single country is learning by doing. And in that process, we will make mistakes and we will have to have policy corrections. And so having a tool like the internet universality indicators is actually invaluable to allow us to have those um, periodic checkpoints that will allow us to make the corrections that we have to make in order to achieve those goals, which we all ascribe to in the context of the World Summit on Information Society and which are now reflected in so many key documents uh, from the Secretary, UN Secretary General's office, including the roadmap on digital cooperation and others. And so for me, as we move forward with these indicators, what are some of the key things that we have to look at? One, 
And here I will build on what Alexander just said about the sharing of best practice and reiterate IFAP's willingness to work with member states to extract best practice and share it among ourselves. Because we need to have evidence-based policy. Secondly, to clear up the kind of data that we have available, not only in its accuracy, but also in its attention to key areas and I'm sad to say that for in many instances, we still do not collect gender disaggregated data. And so um, the IUIs allow member states and the many partners that come together within the framework of the national assessments to actually pay greater attention to this, the accuracy of the information and how we can build better information and data and improve policy in such a way that, as I said before, it is evidence-based. And thirdly, let me just say that for me, these, this whole process is an extremely important process in terms of capacity building. We see that historically, um, member states, all around the world. And I, I must congratulate my colleague from Germany for his excellent remarks and frankness. So let me reiterate, member states from all around the world, as I said, are grappling to figure out how they can build an inclusive and equitable knowledge society. But at the same time, we recognize that there are many dimensions of capacity that are lacking. And so for me, the IUI framework and the national assessments are extremely important capacity building um, opportunities. And how are we going to actually exploit those capacity building opportunities? It is of course by sharing best practice, but the mere fact of bringing the, the different stakeholders into the room together having a truly multi-stakeholder engagement is in and of itself a capacity building exercise. And I sincerely look forward to um, the progress we will make as we move forward um, in the sense that it will build more civil society organizations. We need more civil society organizations in this space, that it will strengthen UNESCO's own national commissions to have a better understanding of the issues and how they can work with the CI sector in that direction. But also that we will have more research and policy institutes that address these questions. So, um, IFAP, you know, um, this is more than 20 years that the Information for All program has been working on building inclusive and more equitable knowledge societies. I'm pleased that we have this tool and that we are actively engaged in supporting that tool so that we support member states to implement better policy and to engage better with the other stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy. What you have said overarching concludes the first segment. I'm very happy to give floor to Madame Mariosa Oliveira, UNESCO Director in charge of the partnership and the program monitoring before we start the second segment to give the reaction of, on behalf of UNESCO to all those supportive statements by our partners. Mariosa, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, the hello everyone from the uh, Dynamic Coalition and uh, to all the partners uh, from around the world uh, that uh, joined us today. 
this is really an incredible segment uh, that uh, speaks about the importance of the Roma framework and the internet universality indicators. I just wanted to highlight some of the elements that came out of this uh, conversation that we had right now, um, which start by saying, you know, uh, um, uh, by uh, Dr. Moller mentioning uh, how instrumental it is uh, for us to uh, be able to assess digital ecosystems uh, and uh, uh, really see whether it, um, uh, our national ecosystems really respond to the ambitions we have for a human-based, uh, human rights-based, uh, dignity-based uh, uh, internet. And this is becoming even more important as we uh, learned uh, that during the pandemic, 800 million more people joined the internet. So it's really important that this ecosystem that we are joining, that is uh, right now, you know, counting on, uh, on 4.9 billion uh, uh, people, uh, really offers everyone an opportunity to access information, to you know, to freely express themselves with respect to privacy, but uh, and and all the other human rights. So this is the framework that allows us to do that. And um, you know, it's really great that to see that uh, this framework is already lending itself as a major um, central element in other uh, important frameworks and has the potential to even do more um, in uh, future you know, uh, uh, frameworks. We see, for example, our colleagues from ICANN talking about how uh, indicators from Rome can really contribute to measuring uh, diversity from uh, uh, from uh, its own perspective. We talk and we see how the internet society um, highlights that uh, these principles are part of you know, uh, uh, and coherent uh, with the principles that internet society looks at. Um, and we see how the effort of developing um, a report and an assessment process in itself, the process of developing these reports is a useful contribution because it, it starts by highlighting the gaps we have on data as Dorothy, you know, our IFAP chair has, uh, has mentioned. Uh, it highlights and identifies the gaps that we we'll need to generate, you know, to yield policy for improvement in terms of uh, accessibility, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, openness, in terms of, uh, of uh, human rights um, elements. And the formation of a multi stakeholder group actually in itself out contributes to this dialogue. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the Rome as a process and as an outcome you know, the report itself as an outcome, it, uh, it makes uh, major contributions. It's illuminating in itself. And it also um, helps us to have this kind of conversation on where uh, in which we share experiences and we share ways forward in improving internet governance, not only at the local, you know, national levels, but uh, regionally and, and globally. So it's it, the more member states join this process, the more lessons we actually extract, the more we can share and learn on the way, not necessarily at the end of the process. And this is one of the things that I would like to offer um, because as a capacity development tool, you know, the Rome, uh, um, ap the application of the Rome framework um, already, you know, on the way uh, is beneficial to member states and to all of us, to all stakeholders involved. So let me offer the opportunity for us to every year you know, uh, at the IGF, which is uh, the place where we have these conversations the best, you know, in the scope of the dynamic coalition, we can really, you know, extract the lessons learned from every uh, uh, process ongoing and share those and identify, you know, common approaches on capacity development and uh, on analysis that we can take very practical methods. For example, where are we going to find uh, the data for specific indicators? How can we peer to peer, you know, learn from each other and support each other's uh, 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 building of these reports? We have fantastic people like uh, our CETIC uh, uh, um, uh, center, you know, category two center, willing to, you know, to share and uh, and support uh, our member states. We have offers such as, you know, uh, uh, from Germany National Commission to do that as well. So let's take full advantage of that, you know, and produce, you know, an annual report, an annual uh, uh, process of, uh, of, uh, of um, lessons learned sharing in which we can really build upon uh, 
uh, and uh, enhance the experience for all of us in improving uh, uh, the way that our digital ecosystems work. So uh, for that, and let me just make a plea as well, we do need you know, uh, to improve the funding of these processes. You know, uh, we need to actually look at how we are going to do, you know, uh, uh, so, you know capacity development of our member states that actually need uh, uh, and are interested and willing uh, to conduct these assessments, but may not necessarily have the resources for that. We need to have, uh, you know, a strong uh, funding mechanism for uh, quality assurance process of the reports so that we all um, are ready to see uh, uh, these results and uh, incorporate the lessons that come and recommendations that come from those reports into an aggregate view at the regional level, at global levels on what we have been learning about uh, the gaps and the ways forward on, uh, on uh, digital ecosystems, uh, 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 human rights based digital ecosystems. So, uh, you know, let me put also a plate you know, for our, our partners to contribute uh, to supporting this, this uh, um, high level uh, mechanisms in addition to supporting uh, other, you know, countries that would like to have uh, reports, but they don't have necessarily, you know, the funding to do so. But thank you so much. You know, you do quite a lot, uh, all of you. And so that's why we are here. You know, uh, you were invited to share your, your views today. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mariosa, for all your excellent points. I just want to reiterate uh, the permanent uh, invitation, just uh, Mariosa said, to invite all of you to IGF and the future IGF to attend our annual reporting and, uh, events to share the experiences and the lessons learned at the national level by using the indicators. That would be a, a tradition, a new IGF tradition. Every year you will have a, a Romex indicator Indicator event on day zero, and we'll keep that uh, as yes as last night the rock and roll music is it's equally it's equally exciting. Yeah, you are laughing, right? You agree with me? Um, <clears throat> now I think we are uh, in a perfect timing to move to the second segment, uh, really to discuss the actions and the suggestions how we improve the work of Rome and also how we make the dynamic coalition more dynamic, more useful to support the global and the national implementation of Rome in principles and indicators. So uh, my dear uh, speakers, Please be uh, be uh, be frank, be honest, be open. We are really here to hear from you how we can improve our work. I'm super honored to introduce the, fir uh, the first speaker, Mr. Jan Kleisen, representing the Council of Europe. Jan, are you with us? Yeah, I see you. Yes. Please take the floor. Hi, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, uh, indeed, to all the participants from all uh, from all over at the IGF. Also, sorry uh, not to be with you, Sion, for this particular IGF in person, because uh, the Council of Europe has been, of course, collaborating with, with UNESCO at a whole series of IGFs uh, going way all the way back to, uh, to the first ones that were, that were organized. Um, we, the Council of Europe, just for a few words, for those of you who may not be uh, aware of the organization's distinction to the European Union, the Council of Europe uh, is the oldest European organization. It was founded in 1949 uh, uh, by the likes of Winston Churchill and Konrad Adenauer, and it brings together 47, 47 European countries, so far more than the 27 of the European Union, 47 European countries, and we cater for some 820 million people on the European continent. Uh, our main task is, again, just one sentence, by way of introduction, to promote human rights, rule of law and democracy, both online and offline. Uh, and uh, we do that through legal cooperation. Uh, we have established some 200 treaties, uh, the best known of which is the European Convention on Human Rights with its court in Strasbourg, but also a whole series of important texts uh, with regard to uh, the or new technologies. Uh, the first, the world's first data protection convention, of course, uh, and we celebrated this year the 40th anniversary of that, um, which has 66 uh, parties throughout the uh, throughout the world, all five continents. I'm very pleased to say, and um, 120 countries uh, were visit were online with us two weeks ago to celebrate this event. 
so just a few, just a few uh, uh, introductory remarks. Now to come to the dynamic coalition on the Internet University indicators. Um, we have been following the work of UNESCO with, with uh, great interest. Uh, as you know, uh, the Council of Europe adopted in 2016 a recommendation on uh, internet freedom uh, and uh, it came with the toolkit uh, of indicators that can be used for measuring the level of compliance with human rights standards on the internet so very much also what what you're doing and uh, we are very pleased that uh, UNESCO refers to this particular recommendation and the toolkit as a means for verification the assessment of your university, internet universality indicators. Um, the recommendation also encourages our member states to really undertake the national evaluation and annual reporting that has been mentioned in the previous, in the previous panel. Um, we have various bodies in the Council of Europe, uh, I will not go into all the, all the details, uh, but uh, there is follow-up and the, the implementation of our texts is monitored and we continue to encourage the member states to uh, follow uh, the to follow the UNESCO indicators when conducting national assessment. Um, a few words on, on the, the word dynamic in the term dynamic coalition. Um, and I would like to address three categories of, of stakeholders. First of all, governments. I think we must continue to, to uh, remind governments of the need to commit to uh, develop real strategies, not just in words, but real strategies and implement them and clear roadmaps, that's to say clear plans where they want to go, uh, which should include evaluations and reports on internet freedom. It is also important that these reports on internet freedom be made available to the public, that they be shared with other states so that experiences and best practices uh, can emerge and can, can be discussed. Second group of stakeholders, the business community. Very important to ensure that the protection of human rights online uh, is actually carried out, is, uh, is a reality. Um, we have in 2018 complemented our advice to member states by another uh, recommendation on the roles of and responsibilities of internet intermediaries, a uh, text which is addressed to governments, but also to business with very concrete suggestions, very concrete suggestions on what they can and what they should do. We've taken this a bit for a step further in the Council of Europe. Um, we're an intergovernmental organization, as I mentioned uh, initially with 47 member states and incidentally also five observer states. Um, uh, and uh, we uh, have traditionally worked since we were established with civil society. However, since 2017, we've also given a formal partnership to business, um, which allows companies to sit at the table, to internet companies. And this partnership has grown to over 25 today. It includes all the big US, uh, the big tech, if you like, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, Facebook, Apple are all with us. Uh, we have a lot of telecoms. Uh, we also have standard settings, for standard setters, for instance, IEEE, and a whole series of uh, associations of smaller internet service providers. So really quite a comprehensive crowd. Uh, and they are participating, allowed to participate in the work of the Council of Europe, sit at the table uh, and discuss uh, both the non-binding text we produce and the binding text. Um, then a, a, the third category of stakeholders are the NGOs. Absolutely essential to make sure that uh, constant pressure is, uh, is there on governments, on business, uh, to comply with the, the recommendations uh, and, of course, even more so with the legal texts that have been, that have been agreed uh, and therefore uh, they should also, we have them at the table at the Council of Europe. Uh, I know they participate very actively in the IGF and I cannot uh, uh, overstate the importance of their, of their role in making sure that what is agreed to formally is also practically implemented. Um, last but not least, of course, the cooperation between, between international organizations is very important. Uh, this is a wonderful example, and thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words about our work at the Council of Europe. 
Um, we work with UNESCO also in uh, a new area of, uh, it, is, it is not strictly internet freedom, but it is closely related, namely the development of artificial intelligence, intelligence where um, uh, UNESCO, of course, adopted uh, its recommendations uh, recently, and the Council of Europe fin finalized last week uh, the elements work on the elements for a future AI treaty. And uh, negotiations on that will start next year. And uh, we hope that within three to four years, we'll be able to deliver the world's first treaty on artificial intelligence and human rights, rule of law and democracy. So uh, please watch this space. I think uh, it, is, it is very much linked also to questions of internet freedom. A lot of issues that are discussed here also have to do with the use of artificial intelligence. It would take me another half hour to set all that out. So you would cut me off. So I won't, I'll just indicate it here, but there really are lots of links. And if you look at the elements uh, that we have uh, identified for the future treaty, you'll see that there are several which directly link also to the uh, indicators for internet, internet freedom. And finally, something that we haven't started work upon, but which I would like to highlight here is an even further new development is all the work on, on creating virtual realities. We've all heard, of course, about the, the projects for metaverse, etc. Uh, that will create lots of challenges. We'll see what will actually come out of all that, but it is clear that uh, virtual reality, realities uh, will be uh, coming. We already have virtual currencies uh, as, a stark as a good reminder that this is not just theory, but actual practice. Um, I'm not sure whether Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse as described will ever uh, be a reality, but that similar developments are taking place, I think is undeniable. And it therefore, I think, wise to start reflecting already now and more than reflecting, think very hard on how we can make sure that our standards of freedom, uh, human rights, human dignity are also preserved in that environment. Just something to, you know, some food for thought. So thank you very much for this opportunity and look very much forward to following the discussion. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thank, thank you, Yeah, I do enjoy all your presentation. So many educating issues to be signaled by you. The Council of Europe and the UNESCO has been working so closely on these uh, Rome principles and also contributing to your internet of freedom recommendations. Also, we are sharing so many member states. We do hope to have closer collaboration with you and a support from you. And the next speaker I'm going to introduce is representing the media community. Mira Milosevic, are you with us? Yes, yeah, I, know I see if you, you can see you. hear me or, or see me. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sean Kong, and uh, your excellencies, your colleagues. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here, um, although virtually today. Uh, we are so grateful for being part of this initiative uh, for, for many years now, uh, and of course, for the opportunity to participate in today's discussion. Uh, the Global Forum for Media Development uh, that I represent here is a network of more than 100 civil society organizations from 50 countries supporting freedom of expression and media freedom worldwide. Uh, we are uh, also a founding organization and a secretariat behind the Dynamic Coalition on Sustainability of Journalism and New Media. And establishing this DC uh, two years ago was a really big step for our community uh, because journalism and news media perspectives, especially those from small community, local journalism organizations, and uh, when they come from small markets, are often missing from many current regulatory and policy conversations. Despite what we see as increasing relevance and emphasis uh, of, of importance of uh, free spaces for discussion and quality information. And uh, despite what we all call for when we speak about multi-stakeholder inclusion. And we all know that internet actors and policymakers in the age of digital convergence are really today directly influencing and shaping uh, the future of journalism and news media. And all the issues that we are discussing uh, here today uh, at the Internet Governance Forum uh, directly or, or 
uh, indirectly are affecting how digital markets are governed and the, the way Jan just mentioned uh, uh, artificial intelligence, for instance, will impact uh, cont content production, curation, moderation, distribution, and uh, ultimately consumption. And so what we have seen from recent digital regulatory conversations around the world is that we exactly require more data, more access to data, uh, more access to see what is really happening behind the algorithms, behind the uh, uh, visible architecture uh, of internet. And we also need more rights to do assessments and to see how different actors uh, of internet impact fundamental rights. And especially from our perspective, freedom of expression and access to information. And Henriette has just perfectly summed it, summed it up. We need brutally honest evidence to be able to contribute to really informed policies and not to just go after the latest uh, uh, trend. Uh, and of course, many other colleagues have mentioned that up to now we had a number of mechanisms that were monitoring uh, in our sector and measuring the state of rights and freedoms around the world uh, when it comes to press freedom, freedom of expression. However, when it comes to monitoring and measuring the real state of internet, digital uh, spaces in, in relation to human rights and development, I said it before, we didn't have a holistic approach and this is, uh, they, we, we felt that it was lacking. And even within sustainable development goals indicators, there are very few indicators that uh, report on all major aspects of uh, internet. And this is what Rome principles emphasize and, uh, and bring. And of course, as I said, without measuring what matters, uh, internet will fail to bring more freedom and more access to information. And again, from perspective of journalism uh, and news media community, uh, we, are, uh, we are seeing that this current crisis of trust in institutions, threats to democracy and shrinking civil spaces is actually continuing on a downward, uh, downward trend. Uh, and is again opening a question of what kind of internet we want. Uh, and if we don't gather all together, in, in a true multi-stakeholder uh, manner, we will fail to create conditions, not only for Internet United, but also we will fail to be able to respond to new challenges and those that we know about for a long time, like our climate crisis and other sustainable development goals. So just to get to the end, uh, the community that Global Forum for Media Development uh, represents uh, we'll be using those indicators through all aspects of our work. This afternoon, uh, we will uh, um, be hosting a session at the Dynamic Coalition for Sustainability of Journalism and News Media. And you will be able to hear this afternoon about initiatives that aim to improve the quality of information, trust, and news integrity, and uh, to try to do that at a scale and uh, scope. And this is one of the area where we continue to cooperate with UNESCO and other partners and uh, interested actors. And so just to, to, to conclude on how we can um, not improve this initiative, but how we can uh, make it more in touch with other actors uh, that are collecting data uh, and evidence. Um, and similarly, as with uh, what we are arguing in the context of SDG um, data collection, uh, here, we could also look at what non-official data providers can bring to the conversation. And so, for instance, many of our members and partners are following and monitoring uh, different indicators rela related to media in digital, including IRX, RSF, Ranking Digital Rights, but we also have regional organizations like Balkan Investigative uh, Reporting Network uh, that are monitoring uh, digital um, rights and uh, their breaches in the region. Then Media Institute for South Africa is doing something similar in Africa and Sembra Media in Latin America, for instance. And uh, I can also reiterate what our Council of Europe colleague, colleague has said, and stressed about uh, engagement with other types of actors as well. Um, thank you so much again, and um, I uh, wish you a productive um, and a good day.
Thank you. Thank you, Mira, for so many substantial inputs. I just realized time has flied. We are having four speakers in the line. So I will move very fast to our next speaker, Thomas Komozroki, representing the Polish Commission for UNESCO. Thomas, are you with us? Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, in Katowice and online, and um, encouraged by uh, Shang Hong. Uh, I tried, I, I'll be quite frank, and maybe sometimes going to into some UNESCO details uh, connected with my perspective. Uh, the UNESCO, uh, the, the internet, internet universality concepts and indicators are very important, uh, as many of us have pointed out. Uh, but at the same time, and for the same reason uh, for which they are important, uh, they can be regarded uh, in a sense as difficult today. Uh, yes, the reason why they, are, they can be difficult speaks much about their value. Uh, it is the complexity of their own X principles and the related complexity and diversity of uh, the indicators encompassing a wide range of perspectives. Uh, from infrastructural to ethical and humanistic, uh, thus offering a comprehensive vision of the internet as a social and human space based on human rights. And at the beginning of the 21st century, rather than embodying the ideal of a re Renaissance man, we still tend to be professionals or specialists focused on strictly even narrowly defined areas of expertise. And this is why I think uh, uh, I, IUIs uh, can be sometimes difficult in, in implementation. Uh, yet we realize that uh, while this limitation is often inevitable, it proves insufficient uh, in important respects and more when conducive, for example, to fragmentation, it contributes to deepen the crisis of understanding the world, human being, human rights, societies, democratic values, so sadly demonstrated by the success of misinformation and disinformation now called in, infodemic in, in the realities of, of COVID-19. There is a need for evidence-based broad, even holistic perspectives and synthesis, but evidence-based and dialogue involving different stakeholders and segments of a society transgressing our isolation and uh, uh, not uniforming us but uh, uh, uniting us uh, in our efforts uh, um, uh, and, and united, uniting our differences in, in these efforts and goals. Uh, in the area of, of digital, uh, in the digital uh, era, it's, it's especially important. In this context, uh, the indicators are an important tool in several respects. And it was already said that, uh, well, of course, because of the impact of a national assessment reports uh, both nationally and, and internationally too, but also uh, of the very the impact of, of the very processes of, of their preparation, which can be and are a significant step towards breaking fragmentation and silos, seeking a common language and enhancing interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary cooperation. And even independently from the work on, on national reports, I think the IUIs uh, can uh, contribute to depend, debates on the internet in this spirit. Um, maybe thus uh, uh, the IUIs could be promoted not only with immediate expectation that further country assessment work and reports appear, but also more generally as a trigger of their own approach, and maybe it could prove to be successful also in terms of, uh, 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 of, of uh, uh, increasing the number of, of country assessment reports. Uh, 
All this seems to be important in the life uh, of the question which was asked to us how to improve a dynamic coalition and how to enhance its global implementation and its role in fostering digital co collaboration. So very um, uh, briefly, what forms of activity in order to promote uh, the IUIs and strengthen the coalition's impact? What kind of cooperation? I can speak uh, based on my personal experience as a National Commission for UNESCO officer. And from this perspective, the following suggestions and further questions uh, come to my mind. Firstly, our intersessional sharing of information, reflections, and common engagements. Of course, webinars mentioned in the action plan for the coalition would be very useful. Uh, the coalition could try to be present as far as possible uh, in main activities of UNESCO on uh, communication and information. Several occasions and opportunities seem to be awaiting in the near future, uh, such as the 10th anniversary of, of the UN Plan of Action on the Safety of Journalists, preparations for uh, WISIS plus 20, uh, UNESCO days, which are several, but for example, uh, 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 World Press Freedom Day is, 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 is a, a, I think, a, a, a very important uh, uh, opportunity for the digital coalition to be active and synergies with promotion of the WINHEC plus 30 declaration seem especially timely with the concept of uh, information of a, a, as a common good, as well as the Global Media and Information Week. Uh, secondly, with regards to informing, uh, informing country entities as a means to promote the coalition and especially the, the indicators whom to inform and possibly involve. Let me mention just some UNESCO networks present in the member states, so in fields. Uh, national Commission were already mentioned by Dorothy Gordon and their, with their bridging and convening role. Uh, UNESCO chairs in the field of communication and information, but also other fields of com competence of UNESCO, like social and human sciences and and education. Um, UNESCO programs, national committees, such as IFAP, which, which is obvious, but what about the member of the world program, national and regional committees? They might be interested in at least some aspect of uh, indicators relating to documentary heritage preservation and accessibility. What about possibilities also to involve other programs from other sectors of UNESCO. I mean, especially uh, the most program, Management of Social Transformation, Excuse me, Thomas, yes. may I interrupt you for one second? You know, we are really uh, lagging behind and also technician just uh, informed that we cannot uh, go over the schedule uh, okay. for only for two minutes. So could yes. you please wrap up a bit because we have so I, your I, I, written yeah, contribution. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> to, 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 to the con conclusion. Uh, yes, of course. So uh, I, uh, the, 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 the projects of IPDC, I will not uh, 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 expand on, the, on that and, and the role of, of the coalition to, 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 uh, to promote I, 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 um, uh, the indicators in, in this way. But, but I think to sum up, uh, uh, my recommendation is, uh, first of all, information and reflection sharing uh, both within and outside uh, the uh, dynamic coalition and using existing opportunities and networks to present. And therefore, it is also important for the DC members, the, the coalition members, to receive information about initiatives or plans uh, existing uh, uh, in UNESCO and uh, within UNESCO environment of cooperation, I would say, uh, which could be relevant from the point of view of, 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 of the indicators. And by uh, UNESCO uh, environment of, of, of co cooperation, I mean, uh, of course, IFAP, uh, I, uh, IPDC, but also Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, also IGF, Eurodic, 
and also in other uh, international and including uh, 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 regional uh, integration organizations with which UNESCO cooperates. And I think it's a very good sign for the sustainability and, and for the contribution of our coalition uh, to uh, digital collaboration that uh, uh, experts uh, uh, connected with both uh, bodies uh, 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 are involved. Thank you very much. And I Thank apologize you. for being late. <laughs> no, all your uh, suggestions are super valuable. We have your written contribution. We'll link to our website. We'll definitely take them forward. So, uh, I apologize for our rest uh, speakers, uh, Mr. David uh, Bakela and uh, Madame Ania and also Kosi. Could you please limit your intervention to three minutes so we all have a say? And if I have one final minute, I'd like to give the floor to Mariosa to close. If you have any burning questions comes i'm here please uh, approach me after session thank you so uh david uh, i think you are online thank you for patiently waiting for us please take the floor ah uh, sorry david is the reg uh, regional vice president of internet society in africa david yeah. uh well i will try to compress my <laughs> presentation but uh, i will provide the written statement and i hope that you'll have some time to read it uh, good morning good afternoon uh, to many friends who have been uh, in this igf journey for uh, more than a decade now uh, i wish i was in uh, katawiche uh, in person but unfortunately uh, i will be participating from beautiful addis ababa the host of igf 2022 uh, the Internet Society is happy that IUI, uh, for which we have contributed uh, from its inception, is moving to this new critical move uh, of creating a dynamic coalition around it. Uh, I think uh, if there was anyone uh, not convinced that the Internet is important, uh, I think uh, COVID crisis has showed that it is. Uh, thanks to it, we have been able to have uh, a semblance of uh, normalcy in this uh, crazy time. We have been able to work, study, and do many other things, uh, even during the harshest uh, lockdown moment. Uh, but all internet access are not the same. In some countries, you might have nominal access, uh, where you have many barriers, and these limit what you can do to improve your life using the internet. Uh, we often use the environment uh, as an analogy for the internet. We all love our environment. We like the air that we breathe. Uh, we need it, uh, the water that we drink, and so on. Uh, and uh, we uh, want to have quality environment. Uh, Unfortunately, not everyone has it. Uh, there are some uh, people who live in environment uh, where there is air pollution uh, that creates uh, problems for their health. And uh, it's, important. it's the same thing with the internet. Uh, we need an internet that enables us uh, to live a healthy digital life, if I may say that. Uh, and uh, to continue with this analogy, if we don't understand enough our environment, we risk spoiling it and lose the very things that we need for our life. That's why we need to measure our air and uh, water qualities. With this, using the same logic to protect and improve the internet that we love, we need to know the features that makes it what it is, uh, measure those features and work to nurture them. The Internet Society uh, had identified a number of uh, uh, features that we need to uh, follow from a technical point of view. I won't go into those details uh, because today's uh, focus is on uh, uh, in the IUI, uh, but I encourage you to uh, go and uh, look at those indicators uh, if you are interested in the technical uh, properties of the Internet. Uh, uh, the Thank UNESCO. Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, could you please wrap wrap up? We are really very tight in timing. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> sorry. I was to, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, the Internet Society is uh, very proud to have been closely involved in these indicators uh, of UNESCO. Uh, we have been supporting uh, the IUI uh, studies in Ethiopia, Ghana, and Argentina, and will continue to support it. 
Uh, and I believe that the establishment of uh, the dynamic coalitions around IUI is the right step forward, since it is important that all stakeholders work together uh, so that uh, we have as many countries as possible uh, where uh, IUIs are implemented and we uh, follow uh, how the internet uh, health is all around the world. Uh, finally, I would like to wish everyone a great session and invite you to my home city, Addis Ababa, in 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Ania, uh, you are representing IDF Secretariat and NRI. Could you please uh, uh, give our uh, give us your remarks maybe in two minutes? Thank you. I'll try to be very brief, not to repeat what other colleagues said. Yeah, thank you very much for this session and having me. Um, there are two points that I would like to make, and I'm not going to elaborate a lot on it to give Dr. Kosi time to speak. But I think that uh, obviously colleagues spoke about the importance and the values of the indicators. We spoke for the past two, three years about the importance and the value. I think there's no need to uh, underline that again. We're just very fortunate to have such system Im implemented and made possible, made available to everyone in the world to, to assess what the internet ecosystem is about on, on local levels and with that on the global level. But I do strongly think that a multi-stakeholder assessment of the internet ecosystem needs to be done through multi-stakeholder lenses, which means who's doing the assessment is also extremely important rather than how the assessment is also done. I think you've gave us such a good framework in terms of the methodology, but then who is doing it is extremely important. So I'm trying to make a point that all stakeholders need to be involved in the assessment. How that is going to be done, obviously it's a matter of a methodological approach, but at least a rounds of public open inclusive consultations is something that is extremely important before the report is released to public to ensure that we have accurate data. And the main reason for that, obviously I don't need to elaborate on that is because just the internet is such complex tool that finding one discipline to speak about various aspects of it is actually very difficult. And um, another point that I wanted to say relates to the NRIs, which you asked me at the beginning. So I work with the national and regional IGFs for the past couple of years. And when I said at the beginning, who's doing the assessment and that should be done through multi-stakeholder lenses, I think it can easily be connected to the national IGFs, especially. In a number of countries still, the only grassroots multi-stakeholder form of, of, let's say, network uh, on discussing the internet governance, but also impacting and shaping the decisions is really still with the national IGFs. We have over 90 countries which are recognized by the IGF Secretariat, fully functional. Dr. Kosi will be the best person to speak about it. And I do think uh, that we are in a good position to have good authors for this type of uh, assessment. And then the second point that I wanted to mention relates to what happens next. So let's say we finally get the, we cover basically the all member states all multi-stakeholder communities existing on a member state level. So what happens next? Who is the one who's making decisions in terms of filling up the gaps and trying to connect us all to the internet that we all want to according to the uh, assessments? Through the national IGFs and the regional IGFs, you also reach those that make concrete decisions. So the governments especially, but also parliamentarians, legislators, as well as those, as I said, who are impacting those decisions. So that's why I think that's a very good way to uh, conduct the assessment and a starting position that is already there in place. Thank you. Thank you, Ania, for all your constant support. Uh, so, Kosi Amsino from uh, Am African ICT Foundation, please take the floor. Thank you, moderator. The dynamic coalition is a very good statement, a framework to learn more what is doing in some countries, what is doing in another region, and so on. But what is important is supposed to have clearly when we are making something in some countries, all the stakeholders are supposed to be involved. All, all of them supposed to be on the table. When we are research are make are been making, governments have a power to make something. Private, private sector also have money. We supposed to contribute to their money. If they are not on the table, what discussion have been doing is not. We are not sure we can be when we will need the help and to concretely address the indicators. That is a very good point we're supposed to, to see. When there are some indicators we don't address some 
one, one year, second year, it's important to make a review and see what on the question you want to move, uh, uh, delete and have short indicators where we can have anywhere, we can compare it. What I'll be doing in Benin, what I'll be doing in uh, Ivory Coast, I'll be doing in Ghana and so on. It's sometimes better for decision making to, to, to know that what I'm doing is low or is going through for myself, for my region. If another countries make a good thing, I can look at look at that thing and make the same thing in my countries. The indicators also can be taken by the regional economic commission, like CDAO, Vineka, and so on. The, the us member states every time the indicators and to have the regional statistic. It should be very good to have the indicators, the internet university indicators in that statistic. Each year, we can have opportunity to, to know if we are going through good or bad. That is a point I suppose to uh, help us to, to know exactly how we can help the people. In our region, we have also the challenge of money to make the statement country by country. If we can have support by, from uh, ESOC, for example, for some countries in our region, it would be very good to have a statement in all of your countries. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. That's why we are here to support. Uh, I, from the facial expression of our technician, I think we only have for maybe two minutes for our director to address uh, maybe a Twitter closing. But uh, nevertheless, I'd like to thank all of you, our technicians for excellent help. And also uh, my colleague uh, in Paris, Karen, and also Stephen for helping with this organization and, uh, and, uh, and also other speakers. So Mariosa, please. Please take the floor and address your final remarks. I'm going to actually take 30 seconds to say, you know, it's a was a fantastic discussion. Thank you all of uh, of the uh, people who contributed to that, uh, all the organizations that are now partners on that. Let me just say that, um, you know, the aroma approach applies to other technologies as well. We've already applied it to artificial intelligence. We look forward to applying it to virtual reality, to quantum and to other, you know, and invite you to contribute to that effort as well. Uh, digital ecosystems of all kinds need to be assessed for how they, they impact human dignity, human rights. Um, I, let me highlight the importance of uh, the most stakeholder approach that the, the Dynamic Coalition represents and that everybody mentioned. Uh, as the key element for really taking it forward. And to say that, um, you know, the Rome assessment is the first step. What we really need is the capacity to implement the changes that the uh, internet uh, uh, universality indicators point to us are necessary to really enable human rights approach, open, accessible, most stakeholder governance, internet, ecosystem for all of us. So thank you. Thank you very much for all the contributions. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to everybody in the room and online. Yeah, and also see you next time, maybe in Addis Ababa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.